Marie Harridge, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Uh, hi, Adrian, welcome. Hello, one blessed lady. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming in. You guys are welcome. Thank you so much. Um, Prophetess Yolanda, welcome. Mr. Jeff, Jeff Saunders, welcome, sir. Good afternoon to you. I hope you are well. Okay, here we go with numbers. Let's see. All right. Corral Joe. Lady B901, you're welcome. I feel like we got trolls filtering at the same time, but it's all right. We got a block party that is beyond imagination. <laughs> hey, you guys, come on in. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. And uh, uh, Seattle. Okay. All right. Seattle. I, I think it's one other lady that I know that's from Seattle. Miss Keetra. Hey, darling. Welcome. Love you. Good to see you always. I love you. I am uh, trying to, to share uh, this broadcast myself. Hello, darling. How are you? Um, okay, I think I got it. Let's see. Yep, there it is. All right. Well, um, I was asking the Lord, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> and uh, I want to, uh, a couple of things. This was, uh, we've been talking about renewing the mind and we've been um, discussing how, you know, the power of a renewed mind is working. So Romans 2 is our base scripture and um, we're going to kind of go back around to it because it has just been really, um, really good for us to really open it up and see what God is intending. And then also first Timothy, where Paul is telling Timothy to take that prophecy and fight with it. And so, uh, I said to you all on yesterday, it's not about loading you up or the day before with so much more prophecy as it is getting you to a level of being able, Hey Wanda, to really walk through what it is that you are believing God for that God already spoke to you. So I was asking the Lord today, I was like, okay, God, where do, you know, what do you want to talk about on the periscope? What do you want to say? Because I'm the instrument. And so I actually have my old notebook. I don't know what I was looking for in it. Hello, hello. And uh, I opened it up and believe it or not, <laughs> I found some notes from October 28th of 2014. This is when I wrote this and God gave this to me, of course, at this time. And it had to do uh, with a great deal of deliverance uh, taking place with through the prophetic. I'm going to really talk about prophetic and deliverance and how they co uh, uh, collaborate um, in the class on October 27th. This class, guys, I'm telling you, you want to get in on it. I mean, for the price you are uh, D Dracon or D Raycon 1964. You're welcome. You want to get in on this class. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this class. This you don't want to miss this class. Seriously, this one is one. Hey, Miss Brenda, this one is one. I'm telling you, this is going like I I know that this class is going to top <laughs> some of the classes that I have done. So if you ever taken any class with me at all and you enjoyed it, this one is going to put it's, it's already over the top for me even how God the stuff that God is giving me. I'm like God, I'm telling you only you. Only you. Uh the stuff that God is revealing and opening up uh, himself, the way he is revealing and opening up himself. Uh, concerning prophecy and the prophetic and prayer and even deliverance for me is phenomenal right now. And so I am saying that you don't want to miss this class. You don't. You can go to the website. You can sign up for it that way. And um, it's there. And I will be there 
on October 27th at 10 a.m. on Zoom. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I am i don't even have words. Like, I'm so super hyped about this class. So I'm, I can hardly wait. I'm like, God, I just, I almost want to record stuff and just put it out, which I might do some snippets. We'll see. We'll see what the Lord says. So, uh, prophetic wind, welcome. So let's get into this. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, O oh God, for being Lord and God and Savior and King and Deliverer and Healer, love of our soul, Bishop of our soul, us being the apple of your eye. Thank you for loving us, your loving kindness. Thank you so much for all that you're doing that you are going to do. Thank you for your move. Gracefully purpose, I love you. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you're going to say, speak, deliver. Every prophetic word that you're going to release on this scope today, Father, we seal it in advance in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that what you're going to release today will be a phenomenal and cause a push and an enforcement of what you already promised us and that we'll begin to see the manifestation and we shall surely testify in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. Guide us in the way and the direction that will give God the Father the most glory in the name of Jesus. And for this we bless you, we honor and praise and adore you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. First timers, welcome. Thank you for being on this scope. Um, I appreciate you so very much for being on this scope. And thank you so much for taking time to come on. For those who started following me from watching a replay, something <laughs> grabbed your attention or something uh, by God's grace and mercy. And I am humbled uh, that you would choose to follow me. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Amen. Uh, God's girl. Hey, love. Welcome. Nat. Hey, darling. Welcome. Good to see you. Always, always, always. Now I feel like my people are coming in here. I love you guys. Thanks. Happy Sunday. Uh, afternoon in on, on the East Coast. I am in uh, Georgia. So happy Sunday afternoon on the East Coast. It is cool and I am waiting to go to warm places. Amen. I got invited again to Jamaica by one of the um, uh, this uh, this mother in the church. She said, um, you can go you can go to Jamaica with me for Christmas. I said, I will. I w listen. You ain't even got to twist my arm. You ain't got to tell me how nice. Just I, I will. <laughs> yes, see, bless of the Lord. Okay, welcome. Yeah, I was like, listen, I'll go, Jamie. Welcome. I will. Let me tell you, I, I'll do some coconut shrimp. I mean, I will. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I don't even eat stuff like that. But I'm telling you what, for real, like, I will. I do like coconut, seriously, so... Yeah, you're in Pensacola. Okay, I'm telling you, Z5 Eber, welcome, love. Hit up my people. Thank y'all for coming. I was like, where the, where are they? Because I know normally y'all waiting on me on Sundays. Like, for real, by four, I feel it. Like, they like, okay, where, where she at? When she coming? <laughs> so, thank you guys for coming in. Uh, blessings to you. Let's get into this. So, Romans chapter 12 and 2. This is one of our base scriptures. I beseech you, therefore... Um, well, one and two. Romans 12, one and two. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, Ailey, O five, O something, welcome, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service unto God. And do not be conformed, verse 2, to the ways of this world or the contexts or the patterns or the culture, some, some uh, uh, translations say, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. By the renewing of your mind. So the renewing of the mind is a process. It's a process. And why does our mind need to be renewed? Because maybe these are the questions that you've been asking. Like, okay, so my mind needs to be renewed. Why? So what? Um, Embaculo, okay. Um, why does my mind need to be renewed? For what reason or what cause? What is the point of it all? If my mind is being renewed or not? I mean, I'm saved, clearly, you know. So why would my mind need to be renewed? And I'm going to answer that question by the grace of God today. I'm going to answer that question for us because some people are wondering, like, what's the big deal? I mean, you keep talking about it. I keep hearing about it. What is the reason you're stressing this so much? Why do, does my mind need to be renewed? Hello, hello. 
And so it needs to be renewed for a few reasons. Let's 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 kind of let's bring everybody forward. Daniel 7 and 25 says, and he will speak great words against the most high and the wear out the saints of the most high. Um and think to change time and laws, I believe it says, or laws and time. Now, what's significant about this? Let me tell you what's significant about this verse of scripture. It's a verse of scripture that is where the revelation has come to Daniel that this basically there is going to be a fight and that there is a fight and there is some serious warfare that is coming. However, it's the major effect of the warfare is going to be on the saints of God. Beloved and welcome, darling. Uh, Tater Brond. I hope I'm saying that correct. Welcome. So one of the things that, that is happening is that um, the, the, there is a speaking out against the Most High. Now the people who are, or those that are being affected, affected and affected, because affected is an outside thing, maybe, uh, and affect is inside, okay? So, who's being affected and affected by these great words that are spoken against the Most High are the saints of God, clearly. They're the saints of God. Welcome, Pastor Regina. Uh, the saints of God. And so, with that being the case, we now have to understand or we can come to understand what warfare is in the mind. Thank you, love. What warfare is in the mind and why is it in the mind? Because this is the place the enemy releases his voice at most in the mind. And why? Paul said it in Romans chapter 7. It is with my mind that I serve the Lord. So why is there great words spoken against the Most High in the mind of the saints and wearing the saints out? Because it is with the mind that you serve Christ. The Bible says you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, Lady B, with all, welcome, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. Why? Because it is with your mind, I'm going to keep saying this, you serve the Lord. We serve the Lord with our mind. When you are, the old church had a song, woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Y'all remember that song? Okay, why? Because the mind of Christ is uh, having our minds right or the right mind is so important. Amen. Because if not, then you cannot serve God properly. Come on. It's right there in the book. I didn't write it. According to scripture, you need your mind, according to Paul, to serve the Lord. So why does he keep emphasizing the renewing of the mind? Because if, with, if your mind is not right, if your mind is not in the right place, you cannot serve God. Why? Not because you don't want to. I want you to hear me. Not because you're not called. Not because you don't have desire to serve God. But the enemy, if he emphasizes Trace affects, infects, and um, infects. I in infects. Come on now, Kyrie Cody. Welcome, uh, Kahari Cody. I think it is. Welcome. If if your mind is messed up somewhere, somehow, the enemy is going to have an advantage over you. And Paul has declared to us that we should not have, uh, be ignorant to the devices of the enemy, lest he gain an advantage over us. Um, the Bible says in the book of Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Where is knowledge? Knowledge has to do with the mind. Come on. You recall things to, to where? The mind. You think in the mind. All of these things happen in the mind and if we don't know this and the enemy does we are at the disadvantage so he'll speak great things Daniel 7 25 Pastor Harris welcome will he will speak great things against the most high and wear out the saints of the most high now notice this come on now Mo notice this amen uh mr jeff notice this that he says he will speak great things against the most high and wear out the saints of the most high now watch this why is it that he's speaking things against the most high but yet the saints of god are the ones who are being weary or worn out by the the speaking 
I, I, that thing intrigued me when I read it because I was like, well, wait a minute. If he's speaking against God, then why doesn't God do something about it? Because it's affecting God's people. But why? Because the enemy knows if he can talk you out of your game in your mind. Father, we pray. I think I prayed for you the other day, J-Rock. Um, we pray for um, protection and we pray for your will concerning this job. And uh, we pray, oh God, for anywhere that the enemy has set up against the uh, person concerning work, Lord God, that you would intervene and interject yourself in that situation by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so... It is with the mind that we serve the Lord. So Paul has come to this revelation that it is our minds and it has been in the mind that we've struggled, that we had problems, that we had issues. Because in the mind is where the lies start. He speaks great words against the Most High. And the saints of the Most High are worn out. They're, he's wearing out the saints through the words, verbiage, right? And so Paul now says to us, it is with my mind that I serve the Lord. And then, so we, we are, we're getting a, a, a better understanding here of why God talked so much or had them write so much about the mind in the scripture. The mind is important. Hey, Cole, welcome. The mind is important to God because it is with this mind. Hey, Miss Ann, welcome to God. So, Paul says, it's with my mind that I serve the Lord. But when the enemy has been releasing and bombarding the mind of an individual or the mind of saints with all kind of stuff, I'm telling you what, it's just, you, you're like, okay, you know, because you won't believe truth because every time a lie comes in, it diminishes truth. It steals, it kills and destroys truth. It's a murdering spirit. This is what happened when uh, uh, Eve was in the garden and, and the serpent was talking to her and he was saying things to her, making uh, whatever points he made to get her to go to uh, the tree and to for, and do what, what God had already said not to do. And so it killed their ability to be connected to God as he intended. It killed the communion that they had with God. Now, why do I say that? Because at the moment that they ate, the Bible says, one, their eyes were open and they were naked and ashamed. Now, he, they had been naked all the time and never, ever had shame. But after this encounter with the serpent and eating the fruit, now their eyes are open. Well, what does that mean? Not their spiritual eyes. The spiritual eyes closed and the natural eyes open because it was only in the natural status that they would have been ashamed to be naked considering that they were the only folks there. Amen. At least according to the way we understand it or is written. So now, why would they become naked and ashamed? It's him and it's his wife, uh, the, 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 those two together. And even if it were more people, well, all y'all were naked. So everybody was in the same, you know, status. So why was there, why would they now, hey, Miss Jennifer, welcome, love. How Now, why would they now come and be ashamed of being naked? Spiritual eyes got closed and carnal eyes were open. Physical eyes were open. Physical eyes were open. And so now that their physical eyes have been opened, they're naked, they're ashamed. And then Adam said, God comes, the voice of the Lord comes in the cool of the evening and says, Adam, where are you? And he said, uh, I was uh, uh, naked, hard to help. Hey, baby dog, welcome. I was uh, naked and I was, I hid myself. I was afraid and I hid myself. How are you afraid of the one that you've been communing with all of this time? There was communion between he and God, the voice of God and him all this time. And now you're afraid of the one that you commune with all of this time. Why? The enemy. He spoke great words against the most high and weary the saints. In this case, it was the, the man that God created and the woman that God had created. He spoke great words. Surely God knows that you'll be like him when you eat the fruit. You won't die. He was speaking great words against the most high and they bought the lie. And it killed the communion. It killed the relationship. That relationship was not the same anymore. Amen. That relationship was not the same anymore. And so this is what's happening. Thank you so much, love. 
this is what's happening to us um, in, in the body of Christ. He speaks great words against the Most High. And the minds of the people are affected and infected with this this lies and deception. And then it, it starts to diminish the faith of the individual or the saints are worn out. Why? Because the mind is being bombarded with lies and the lies keep causing weight. Hallelujah. I could go there, but I'm, I'm you feel me. Let me keep moving. So when we're looking at prophecy, I said this on the other day, we're looking at prophecy. Oh, yeah, it does. We're looking at prophecy. And when we look at pro the prophecy, I said to you guys, in a, according to 1 John chapter 5, there are three in heaven that are one. And that is the word, that is God, that is the spirit. And then there are three that bear witness in the earth. That is the spirit, the blood, and the water. Right? And so now... The spirit then is a witness in heaven, but he is also, I mean, he's one with God and then he is a witness in, in the earth, right? So now, with that being the case, we can see then that God is very sensitive to his word and his oneness with the word. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 1. The, in the beginning was the word. God was the, the word was with God. God and the word were one. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So I'm paraphrasing here. But you know, in, if you read chapter 1 of uh, the Gospel of John, you see this. So God and his word are one. So he cannot lie because if he lies, then he now is 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 not God. He's not who he said he was because his word is no longer effective. So when God releases a prophetic word to us, we must come become one with the word of God and that word must become one with us. Why? Because that's going to help push out the lies. It's going to help diminish the deception. It's going to help bring us to the place where we are seeing the manifestation of that word because that word is one with God. So when that word becomes a part of us and Jesus in us, Christ in us, the hope of our calling, the hope of glory, the one who is in a greater one in us, the word now has to reconnect with the one that is in us. Amen. And when the word reconnects with the one that is in us and becomes one, we now have the opportunity and the ability to see the manifestation. Watch this. If you go back to Genesis chapter one, I'll give this to you again. Genesis chapter 1. Remember the Bible says that how the earth was void and without form. Amen. And as the earth was void and without form, the Bible says that God said, let there be light. Amen. And then the Bible says the spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep. Right. And then it was light. It was separation of water to and dry land. The sea got its boundaries. Everything God was doing, he was speaking. In the beginning, he spoke, the spirit moved. He spoke, the spirit moved. It's the same for us, you guys. God speaks his word to us through the mouth of a prophet, through a sister, brother in Christ, who is humble enough to allow the Holy Spirit to work through them to release a prophetic word. Because you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. We are all prophetic people. There's just a, a, a different uh, level of administration and it's a different level of, uh, it's an office. But you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. You can give a word as a brother and sister in Christ who is humble enough to let the Holy Ghost use them. And listen, let me say this. I know people say, you know, anybody prophesy, you know, when the Holy Spirit is present. It's not just when he's present. It's when you are humble. Because if God cannot trust you to give a word, an accurate word, I want you to hear me. If God cannot trust you to give an accurate word as a brother and sister without now running, trying to get cars, calling yourself a prophet, putting yourself somewhere he did not say, which is a lie, then he's not going to trust you to give the word then. I don't care. Horseback riding or walking. You can like it, lump it, or leave it. It's the truth anyhow. God has to be able to trust you to speak a word, even as a prophet. You don't just get to be a prophet because you feel like because you're feeling prophetic today. No, it may be some deliverance that's needed in the life of that individual. Prophecy is when God can trust you. He can trust you to shut your mouth up even when you want to speak. He can trust you to keep the secret things that he has given and trusted you with so 
you ain't blabbing off everything. Amen. He can trust you that when you see something and you know that God is showing you that, you can be quiet and pray about it. And you ain't got to go tell five people, oh, I'm just getting y'all to pray. No, you just want to gossip. That is not a prophet. I'm telling you, all these prophets that's running around, you, you can't keep nothing. You can't, God can't trust you with nothing. And so if he show you something, you're going to go blabbing and then you put it out in the earth too soon and now it's all destroyed. So God now got to go back and get somebody else to war over that thing to get it together. Beautifully made 2017. You're welcome. And so sometimes God gives us words as prophets and we have to carry that word and hold on to it and war over that word and it ain't even the word for you. That's what a prophet, but God got to be able to trust you to war over a word and carry a word that's not even for you. He'll give you, he will give you a word and you carry it and you nurture that word and you pray and intercede because you know when it's, when the time is right, he's going to have you release that thing. And so you've been faithful over that word that nobody knew about. You didn't have to tell everybody trying to make everybody believe you're a prophet. You didn't have to tell everybody. And then he'll say, okay, I can trust you. I can trust you. So if God can't trust you, he is not going to use you in that capacity. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. I know people like to believe that no matter what, you know, no, no, no. The Holy Spirit is only going to move on somebody who he can trust. He don't trust you. You got, and you always got to be the light, limelight, like, oh, I got to be here. It's got to be about me. No, 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 no. Because prophets already know the, what it costs you. This thing costs you. Salvation is free, but the anointing is going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lot of stuff. It's going to cost you friends, comfort, family. It's going to cost you all the things that are most close to your heart. Everything in you is going to get tried. Everything in you is going to be tested. And I'm telling you, all in front of it, I'm telling you, no, it's not. It's going to cost you. I'm talking about you going to go through heartbreak, heartache, breakdown like you have. And when you think you're broken, God will break you some more and say, now still tell me what you're going to do with this. Are you still going to serve me? Are you still going to do this or or not. So I know it's not lightweight. It's not. So when people get up there, oh, you know, this and this and this, I'm like, whatever. I can, I say it about myself because I can boldly stand and declare, this is who God declared to me that I am. And I have fought it. I fought God. I resisted. I'm telling you, I didn't just resist the devil. I was resisting God. Like, no, I don't want to do, no, get somebody else. Pick somebody. You can get other people. You got better people than all of those things. And he's kept on coming. Why? Because God knows the end from the beginning. He knows who you really are. He knows what you'll really do. He knows he can really trust you or not. So it's not about that. And they're not just prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists. God has to know that he can trust you you with his people that you're not going to get up there trying to showcase in front and 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 telling folks business and now folks running around scared of prophets folks used to look for prophets because they knew the prophets heard from God and now people running from prophets because they are trying to figure out if you're going to see they sin or not well honey I ain't here to broadcast your sin that ain't my that's not what I'm here for I went to a church like that and the people were not moving and I was like what's going on and somebody said oh you know people are afraid of prophets because they don't want their stuff told. I said, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to bring healing because and restoration because that's what God wanted me to do. He didn't send me here to expose your sin. You know what you're doing in the dark. I don't need to tell you that. You need to know how to get out because there are people that don't want to be where they are. Amen. Let me just get off that. I don't know where that rant came from, but let me get back on, let me get back on schedule here on my notes. So when the word of God comes to you, it must become one with you. The greater one that is in you, the greater one that is in you, that word has to become one with the greater one in you so that you can begin to walk out, 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 out the manifestation or out. God is faithful to me. Welcome. Or outwardly walk out what God has put on the inside of you. We have been listening, but we haven't been hearing these prophecies. So we listen and we say, oh, okay, thank you, heart to help bless you. We've been listening, but we ain't been hearing. The ears and the mind are the womb of the spirit. W-O-M-B. The womb of the spirit is here. It penetrates the ear gates. And it gets here. Once it gets into this, and I'm, I'm pointing here as the head, it gets into the mind. Amen. 
then it's going to start permeating all of who you are. Once you can receive, you can receive it. And I said this on the other day. It's like when a man and woman come together, the man releases the seed into the woman, uh, goes into and, uh, um, uh, fertilizes uh, the egg of the woman or ovaries or however you want to describe it that's, that makes the production process happen and she becomes pregnant. So now what was in the man, the man doesn't stay attached to the woman. He doesn't get inside the woman to stay there until, no, he releases uh, who he is, a part of himself into the woman. The woman now carries that and that that part of her and that part of him become a brand new strand. I said this the other day. So now you may not know. We don't know the exact time and date of conception. We don't know like the date that that embryo was formed. We don't know the date that the, the, the uh, ovary was fertilizing the egg. We don't know. But we do know this. At some point it manifests. At some point we know the woman has been with a man because there's a baby. Come on. So it's like that with prophecy. You hearing this word yeah, your strand is a divine strand because it's a new strand. When your mother came with your father, they created a whole new strand because they had that strand had never been put together before. So you are a brand new strand. So when prophecy comes to you and I, right, the word comes and we hear faith cometh by hearing. So when you hear the prophecy, I said this, read it, speak it out loud, say, uh, read it, speak it, uh, listen to it, speak it. First Lady Lewis, welcome. Read it, speak it. Uh, hear it, speak it. Keep on speaking it till it gets a part that becomes a part of you. Not just those little parts that you were liking, but the whole of the word becomes a part of you. And so as it becomes a part of you, I am very well, ma'am. How are you? Good to have you. Thank you so much. So as the word is coming to us and becoming one with us at some point you gotta you now you got something to push out i said this the other day and without apology i say it again you cannot birth something if you never conceived anything you have to have conception before you can push anything out so when we're talking about push praying or something happens well until you become pregnant with something, you can't push nothing out. How, and it's people just talking about, oh, I'm birthing. Well, you've been birthing for 20 years. Come on. That's because you have no conception. Because the moment that conceptions happen, trust me, baby, you're going to push. You're going to have manifestation. You can't push without conception. You ain't pregnant. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you will have conceived the word of God. Make sure that you have conceived the word of God because once you conceive, then you got something to birth out. And so you, and, and people are saying, oh, I got, I'm birthing out my baby leaping. No, honey, it's time for that thing to manifest. You don't stay pregnant forever. Come on. You don't. You got to, that thing must come forth at some point. It must come forth. So when, when, Thank you so much, First Lady. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so whenever the word is coming to us, we don't want to just listen out here, but we want it to penetrate here. Hearing that I told you when uh, Mark chapter four, he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. That is the spiritual ear, not the physical ear. So it needs to penetrate the ear, the spiritual ear and get into the mind. Notice that the mind is not something you can see. Amen. Notice that it's not something you see, but you know it's there, right? We don't see what people are thinking. We don't see it. We don't see what people are thinking. We don't. There's no way to see it. We don't see what people are thinking, so we don't know. But we do know this. We do know that there is a such thing as a thought because, well, after all, we do it all the time, right? But we don't know. We don't see people's thoughts. We don't know. We don't understand. You know, you don't know what a person is thinking sometimes until they open their mouth. You don't know. But we know that something must have been conceived that drives the thought. So what is driving the thoughts? Something behind is driving the thought. 
So when we get prophecy, there must be something conceived. It must be conceived in us, that word, so that it can start driving. I want you to catch this. The thoughts of the mind. What do you mean, prophet? I mean that what you think starts being formulated by what God spoke. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? What you think is formulated by what God said and not by what the enemy said, not by what your circumstances say, not by what your bank account says. Hey, Charmaine, love you. Not by based on what your uh, uh, what your boss said. It's not your mind. Your thoughts become formulated based on the word and not based on your situation. Oh, God, blessed be his name. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because because. Your thoughts are driven by things that you can hear. Come on. I love you. Uh, hey, Miss Jennifer. Your thoughts are driven, come on, by things that you hear, not just what you see. If it's still based on what you see in the natural, then you've not come up to the place you need to come up to. Because I said this before, heaven is not going to physically come down here. We got to come up. That means that we got to bring heaven to a, our mental faculties. Come on here. We got to hear the word of God from heaven and then start walking it out in this earth. That's when we see heaven on earth. Oh, come on. I need you to come up with me. Come on and come up with me. So what we begin to think now is no longer formulated by the one that speaks the great words against the, against the Lord, against the Most High. Remember I said Daniel chapter 7. Hey, Jessica, welcome. It's not just going to be formulated anymore based on the words that he spoke against the Most High. Come on. But it's going to be formulated based on what the Most High has spoken. Oh, God, bless it be his name. I'm almost done right here. I'm almost done right here. And so when we begin to see things from that perspective, or we understand from that course of action that our minds and what we think has to be driven by what God said and not by what we see in the natural, not by what the enemy has said, because he does have a voice and he is saying th some things. Paul let us know, according to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down high, every vain imaginations and every high thing that is lifting itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ, bringing out every thought captive to the obedience of Christ to our obedience has been fulfilled or that we have come to a place where we now can be obedient to what God is saying. One of the things obedience or the obediences that he meant that he's meaning here is the obedience to think like Christ. Let this mind be in you in Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Come on. Let this mind be in you. In other words, you can allow another mind. Come on. Watch this. You can allow another mind to operate through your mind. Do you hear what I'm saying? You can have the mind of Christ operating. You can have the mind of the world. They call it carnality. You can have a mind contrary to the things of God. They call it carnality. And the Bible says that it is an enmity with God. Come on. Because why? Because God is saying one thing to us and he has declared the truth to us, but there is some other mind that is in place that's working something else out in us. Paul said, in one part of me, I got a war going on because the law of my mind is warring against the law of my members and it's bringing me to a place. And finally he says, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank God for Jesus. He wasn't just talking about the physical things. He was saying, who will deliver me from the carnality that comes with this body? This body, as it is, must be changed over. It must go through a transition. And one of the ways that we transition is in the mind. Come on, Holy Ghost. I want you to come up with me today. So our mind then must be renewed. And the prophecy that God gives to us is in order to help our minds move from the status that God did not intend to whatever he said. Your thoughts de then become driven by, this is the point I was making, so let me go back and finish that point. So then when our minds are driven, our thoughts rather, hey Shekana, love you, when our thoughts, thanks gratefully purpose, when our thoughts now have been formulated by the word.
word of God, which is a seed, by the way. Why is it that only a man and a woman can reproduce and make another man a woman? Well, because the seed of the man, a man, has in it the ability to produce something after its own kind. Come on here, Lady Lewis. Yes, ma'am. So then, it's the same thing with the word. A man can produce another man or woman. Amen. You get what I'm saying. Not gender-based, but you get mankind is reproduced by mankind. Amen. So, an animal cannot reproduce a man. A, a cow cannot give birth to a baby, uh, a human being. Come on. Hey, Susie. Welcome. Thanks, love. A cow can't give birth. To a human being. Come on here. A, a, a cat can't have, you know, human babies, right? They, it can't. Don't happen like that. So then, we understand that there's a law of reproductivity here. There's a law of creation. So God has set this law in place. And, and scientists can explain what happens, but they cannot tell you why. I'll say it again. Science has been good at explaining what but they cannot tell you why. Well, we know the why. Because of God and who he is. That's who it is. It, they can tell you what. They can say, okay, well, the sperm goes into the woman and it fertilizes the egg and they show us the little, you know, the things swimming and all of that. They can tell you what happens, but they can't tell you why it happens that way. Why does it happen? How does that seed know to go there? How does it know to fertilize the egg in the woman? How does it know to find its way there? Of all the places in that woman's body, how does it know to go there? Huh? How does it know? And people say, oh, well, you know, and they can tell you what happens, but they can't tell you why. And the why is left to God. It's the mystery of God. Amen. And so then when it comes to the prophetic word of God, God's word is true. Can't, cannot lie. Amen. Can't lie. Will not return void. I, Isaiah 55, 10, 11. As the rain and snow come down to the earth and water the earth and give seed to the, and does not return, give seed to the soil, bread to the eater. So is my word, says the Lord, that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return void, but it will accomplish that which I sent it to accomplish and it will prosper the thing I sent it to. So that means, people of God, that when God releases a prophetic word to you, because I don't want you to hear prophecy the way you've heard it in, before. I want you to hear prophecy on a whole nother level. I want you to have, uh, when you get a prophetic word, I want you to be like a serious uh, prophetic word, like a, uh, uh, what do they call those people that... When they uh, uh, like a prophetic word, uh, I don't want to just say warrior, but like that kind of person, when you get a prophetic word, like you read it, like you already know this thing is coming to pass. It's going to happen like you sitting on ready and waiting on go for God to give you that prophecy, not just get it and say, oh, but it sounds good. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. I want you to be able to get that word, take it and become one with it. So now, since there is a law of reproductivity. Mm -hmm. I want you to catch this. This is going to bless you. I just explained to you. It's poor. Hey, baby. Um, so when a man and a woman come together, they make a brand new strand. They reproduce, right? And they reproduce another after their own kind. Amen? After their own kind, right? And so now, with that being the case and the law, which it is, that's a law. Y'all know science been trying to figure out how to make people without God for a long time. And we know it's just not working. That's why they finally gone to robots. Because that's the only thing that they can make that can be controlled by man and don't have no soul. Because if, in order to make one of us, baby, you got to do it the way he created it. That's just it. Horseback riding or walking, it is what it is. And God is faithful. Amen. So now, since that is the law. And the word of God also is true. So since the law of reproductivity and the enemy can't reproduce either, you know, he can only uh, 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 imitate. Right. He cannot reproduce. Right. OK. So so since that is the law and each kind reproduces out this own kind. Then the prophetic word of God, I want you to watch this because this is the meat right here. Now, I, I'm, I'm done after this. I'm just giving you this meat. So the word then of God, since it can only reproduce according to the law after its own kind, when we hear a prophetic word, 
and it gets on the inside and becomes one with us. That word has to produce what that word said because the law is that it can only reproduce out its own kind. So when the word and me and me and the word, and I'm using bad English, uh, forgive me. When we, when I and the word become one, that's a law. And so what can we reproduce from that word is what the word said. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? So then if God says to you, come on, Miss Marie, you can, you feel me. If the law is that it can only reproduce out its own kind, come on now. And it cannot lie, Candace. You better say that. So then when the word comes to me and to you, and the word is dust and so, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver your children. I'm going to deliver your husband or your ma you're going to be married. And this and you're going to be a financier in the kingdom. You're going to be an entrepreneur or an author. You know, ministry. Whatever God said. Since the word can reproduce out its own kind, come on, once we receive it and become one with it, the word begins to walk out in us what it said it is. So therefore, we see the manifestation. Oh, blessed be the name. I'm already done. We see the fruit of that thing. Amen, Candace. We see it. Why? We see it because it has to reproduce after its own kind. The word is not there to produce anything contrary than what God God already said, glory to God, blessed be his name. Y'all making me holler, glory to God, hallelujah. I just wanted to open this up for you from these, I'm telling you, God blew my mind with that thing because I was like, well, that makes sense. If a man can get with a, a man and a woman, male and female come together, which are mankind or humans, they get together, male and female, because she has a part, he has a part, and they come together. And we are the bride of Christ. Come on, somebody. He is the bridegroom. So you got the male part, amen, so can't nobody get this confused. You got the female part, because we're the bride. Whether you're a man or a woman in Christ, you are the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is the bridegroom. He is the husband man. Glory to God. Bless his name. And so when he releases to us his word, my God, come on here. Then that word gets inside of us and we become one with it. It's got to manifest exactly as he said. It can't be anything less and it can't be anything more. My God today, do you hear what I'm saying? So then when you get that prophecy, don't just hook of my tie and shun up, you know, coming on a Honda. No, no, no. I'm not saying that's bad. That's great. Receive it that way. But really conceive it in yourself that this word, I'm taking this thing in all the way in to that place that God needs that thing to become one with me and me with it. Amen. And then it's going to cause me to walk it out. It's going to produce in me my thoughts Glory to God, bless his name, are going to be formulated. My mind is going to be like the mind of Christ. It's going to think the things that God said. It's going to meditate on what God said. It's going to literally imagine what God, oh, glory to God. Oh, Jesus, y'all make me want to holler. Let me calm myself so I can finish this real quick. So then, once that word gets in, it starts formulating my thoughts. I, I'm imagining according to that word. I'm thinking according to that word. So I think on those things that are good and lovely and praiseworthy and just and virtue and noble. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I, uh, uh, those things that are, um, are, are good. I, I, I begin to Think on those things, as Paul said. And so my mind starts to be renewed and it starts changing. And Paul said, so that you can prove Romans 2, 12 to um, part B, so that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you. So that you can prove it. I can prove it. Why? Because my mind has received. I have conceived in my mind. I have conceived in my heart. What God said is right and true and just and noble. Praiseworthy of good report. Hallelujah. So now it, it and I are one. And that word becomes a part of me. So he is in me. I am in him. And he's is going to make me and cause me to go toward everything God said. Oh. 
Okay, darling. Love you. Thank you so much. Greet Bishop for me, please. Tell him I said hello. It's going to cause me to become one with him and then with his word. And then that word, I'm going to start walking it out. Why? Because it's going to formulate. Thank you so much. It's going to formulate my thoughts. My thoughts are going to be what he said. I'm going to imagine what he said. My, I'm, my body, I told you this the other day. A woman doesn't have to tell her body to produce the hormones needed. She doesn't have to tell her body what it needs when she's pregnant. She was designed so it starts lining up automatically. So once the word becomes a part of me and I'm a part of that word that God gave me, we become one together. I don't have to, he, he, God doesn't have to come back and speak it again. I don't have to get a brand new prophecy because that one is going to start manifesting something in me. Everything in me is going to line up. The way I think is going to line up. The way I feel is going to line up. I'm going to do stuff that lines up with it. The, the Bible said he is a, the word, thy word, oh God, is a lamp unto my unto my feet and a, a light unto my uh, path and a lamp unto my feet. So the pathway is lit by the word, my God. And <laughs> my feet have a light on them that guides me so that I don't stumble concerning the word. And so when we get prophecy, this is why we can take it and fight. See, what we've been doing is trying to take it and fight with the word outside and we've not become one with it. You don't fight like that with the pro prophetic word. Word. No, no, no. You take that word that God declared us concerning you. Amen. And then you begin to be going to get first. You, the first warfare. Let me just give you the warfares of prophecy. So when you get a prophecy, you know what you get. When you get a prophecy, the first warfare is the one with your mind because your mind is going to struggle because what God is saying is not going to line up with what you've been seeing. It's not going to line up with what you've been thinking. You've been thinking one way and God is saying, but that ain't what I was saying. That that's not what I was thinking. So he sends you the word. So your first warfare is the mind. Your first level of warfare is with your mind. So you got to get that word in your mind. And that word begins again to formulate what you think. Formulate your ideas. Formulate your reasoning. Formulate your opinion. Formulate how you feel. Formulate what you do. It formulates what you dream about. Why? Because it's a part of you. It's all in your soul and your spirit. Amen. Your body line up because whatever you were going toward that's contrary to that word that word is going to recalibrate you and put you on that GPS system of God that God's uh, what did he say uh, stun if you want said the God's positional uh, God's positional I forgot what he called God's positional system so that you're going to be now reset and recalibrated automatically by the word. It's a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. So now you're getting on the path because that word and you are one. So you get on the path that God has for you. God's positioning system. Thank you, love. So you get on the pathway. You get on the straight. You get on the street that God intended for you to be on. And you look up and you're like, okay, I didn't know. I'm on the street called favor. I'm on the street called victory. I'm on the street called breakthrough. I'm on the street called more than enough. I'm on the street called overflow. I'm on the street called more uh, 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 breaking through, breaking for. I'm on the street called abundance. I'm on the street called overcomer, conqueror. I'm on the street called triumphant. How did you get there? You got there by God's GPS because the word that he spoke, you and it became one. And you know the word is living and the word is he. So greater is he, the living word in us than he that operates in this world system. So he, the living word, sends a word to the living word and that word, because it's alive, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, begins to cut down all of the weeds and the lies and the deception and all of the wrong stuff that we have believed that's contrary to the way of God, contrary to the will of God, and become, and yes, a street call undefeated and calls us into right position. You talk about reset, baby, that's the real reset right there because now you are set in position to walk out carry out and see the manifestation of what God promised you hello hello darling welcome love you 
It's the word, you guys. His word is true. It's real. And so we got to stop just hearing it out here. And then we're waiting for God to just do it. And he's saying, no, I need you to war in your mind first and let it become a part of who you are in your mind first. And then the second warfare is the part concerning us declaring that second. Because see, once you get in in your mind, a lot of you, you get parts in your mind, but you're afraid to speak it. You won't declare it. You won't decree it. Because when you do, the enemy comes with some kind of fight and says you better stop saying that and so people get afraid and back off the Bible says this uh, Matthew 11 yeah I know it the Bible says this that from the days of John the Baptist till now the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take by force so then what, what happens is the devil says yeah you better not say that again you better be quiet don't testify like that again you better keep your mouth closed and he puts fear in place of faith and people get quiet. So that second warfare is now that you're thinking about it, you need to start saying it out of your mouth. Come on, saying it out of your mouth. <laughs> saying it out of your mouth and after you say it out of your mouth right then your third level of warfare is literally enforcing it and how you enforcing it you you enforce it by you you keep declaring keep decreeing you keep it at the forefront of your mind keep going over that word but this is what the word of the lord says this is what the word of the lord declares greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world luke 10 and 19 and he's given me power to tread upon the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me. So the devil is threatening and you say, but the word says that you can't harm me. The word says I got power over you. That's the word and I believe it's true. I got it on the inside. You enforce it by because now you get a righteous indignation when the enemy brings you that foolishness. When he comes to you, that's the number. No, no, no. But the word of God says, but God's word declares to me. So I'm not just reading it on paper anymore. I'm not. It is written. Come on now. I'm not just listening to it anymore and getting excited, but now it's a part of me. I'm a part of it. I feel this thing deep on the inside. I know that I know that I know. It's not manifest yet, but I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to come to pass. I'm going to see the fruit of this thing. Those who mocked and scorned me, they will witness this miracle. They will witness that what God is doing for me. They will witness that God has done this thing in my life in the name of Jesus. So you start warring like that. So he told Timothy, he said, take this word that you receive, those prophecies that you receive, all right, from uh, the laying on of hands. He said, take those prophetic words that you receive. He said, and as you take those words, and he said, go to war with those words. What did he mean? You got the word. You and the word become one. You and the word are one. And now, amen, you have every right to walk in it. But it starts in the mind. It starts in the mind. And, and every time I'm trying, I, I was trying to get away from renewing the mind stuff, God kept bringing me back. Go back and talk about renewing the mind. Go back. And I was like, Lord, what else can I say about that renewing the mind? I mean, we've heard so many, you know, teachings. We read stuff. We read Battlefield of the Mind. What is it about renewing the mind? And he keeps giving me stuff. He keeps giving me stuff. And I'm just, I mean, for me, I'm like, wow. Because I never thought about it like that. I never grabbed it like that. I needed to God's girl. I give God praise. I never knew it like that. I, I never considered it. You know. Um, yes because we got a war for it Wanda. It's not, it's not that God told a lie. It's not that the person didn't hear correctly and tell you right. You knew when they spoke it there was a peace in you. But the enemy in our mind was saying you better not take that. Better not believe that. Better not you know better not meditate on that. And so we in, in the place of faith that fear has been there so long it feels normal but it's not. It's not normal. I'm telling you guys. Uh, Glory to God is not normal. It's not at all. It's not at all. He is a liar. It's not normal. It is not normal for, for you to, to uh, get a prophecy and then, you know, it's, it's like, okay, well, when is that going to happen? Know whose voice you're hearing. And when you know it's the voice of God, take it all the way. Take it all the way in and let that thing become one with you. Start praying and asking God to let that thing become one with you. To make you and that word one and let it give up. Uh, let it not return void. You know when the word return 
return when uh it talks about returning void that's the same thing as when we're saying to God well I can't do that because and we give him this reason and he said but I already said you could so there's no reason for you to declare you can't he already declared you could so that's and, and now it's like we have been become helpers without knowing it of the enemy to try to make the word void and God is like, no, not what I said, not what I declared, not what I gave you, not at all, not at all. So we have to be, excuse me, we have to become one with the word and the word one with us and let it start permeating every part of our, especially our soul. The soul was given to us by God. God created our soul, put it in this uh, body with the spirit so that we could connect with him again in a way and a place that would cause us to be able to work outwardly in this earth but also to have that communion with him come on now i love that take it to the bank let it draw interest and cash out when god said i'm telling you what you don't have no woman has to tell her body that this baby has got to be delivered. When your water break, she know labor is coming. Baby is coming. Amen. The water has to break. There's blood. It, it's it's got to happen that way. I'm telling you what. So she doesn't have to say, oh, well, uh, okay, it's the ninth month, so let me count so I can tell my body. She doesn't have to tell her body. Her body will know. The baby knows. The body knows. How? Because what started was a divine process that God created. And so he knows the exact day. Even science, they can tell you, okay, well, according to the information that the woman gives, they'll say, okay, your due date is so-so date. It may be on that day. They may be right on the money. But they can't tell you the time. They can say, well, this date or this date. Um, they give the woman, um, like, um, with my of course I have I have children so it was always a due date now for me uh with the first two I was three days off from the date they gave me they gave me one day I was three days off from that date so again because they couldn't tell me exactly but they kind of pinpointed around these dates right and and then you know even for those that say okay we're gonna have to induce labor and all that it's because there's something problematic that the enemy has set up it's so that it, this thing doesn't work according to God's way. But I'm telling you, according to the course of things that God set up, she doesn't have to tell her body when that baby is, is coming. Doesn't. Doesn't. Doesn't have to say anything. And then they'll say to some, you know, thank you so much, Marie. Thank you. I do hope you will come again. Thank you so much for being on here. So, you guys, again, this is how it is with the word of God. God has given us his word listen to it speak it read it speak it hear it out loud L engage the the wound of the spirit penetrate the ears which are spiritual ears and then get into the mind and become one and you'll start i mean your thoughts will be you'll know when it's happening because your thoughts are going to begin to line up so your first course of action just so we can be clear and i do have to run my time is up your first course of action then, when you're listening to that word, reading it or hearing it again, and you're repeating it, you're speaking it out as well for yourself. So if they're saying your name or they're saying sister or brother, you say your name because it's you he's talking to or she's talking to on the recording or whatever. And so you begin to ask yourself so that you can gauge it. Are my thoughts formulated toward what God is saying? God said he's going to bless me, make me an entrepreneur, etc., etc. Are my thoughts lined up with that? Or am I still wondering how that's going to happen? Because if you're still wondering well, how that's going to happen and how is it, then you have to come, become one with it in your mind. And that's the starting place. So your first encounter of warfare is with that, with that word is in the mind. So if you haven't bought in yet that God can do this thing, then that's where you need to start, okay? So you know where your starting point is. And you know when you get there, when your thoughts are formulated based on what God said. Based on what God said. That's how you know. That's your sign that you've gotten to that place because your thoughts are formulated based on what God said.
Okay? That's where you start. Again, you guys, thank you so much for your time. Um, the class is October 27th which is a Saturday coming up. It is online. It is um, on Zoom at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I'm excited about this class and what God is going to do. I think that uh, I believe that it'll bless you tremendously and you really just don't want to miss this class. So um, you can sign up for it on uh, the www.profitmonica.com. Email me, info at profitmonica.com if you have a question. Uh, if there is anything that um, you might want to know concerning the class, if it's not there and you, or you don't understand, email me. Uh, you can also donate on the www.profitmonica.com. Thank you for those who have and do. I so appreciate you guys so, so very much. Thank you so much for, for your support. It means a lot to me. As well as the blog. The blog is out there. Thank you guys for those who are giving me feedback. I am getting the notifications uh, that you're liking the blog. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have to do a new one probably Monday. If not tonight, Monday, I'll have a new one up. And uh, we're going to just uh, be looking at different things. If it's something that you would like for me to maybe blog about, prophetic deliverance, prayer, those three areas, then please do send me an email and say, hey, could you elaborate on this or what about this? I would love to, um, you know give you pertinent information or relevant stuff via the blog uh, not like a class so it's not going to be super detailed but just maybe uh, to elaborate on something that may be uh, helpful to someone else as well so let me know um, and uh, I am just so grateful to the Lord for what he's doing let's pray Father we bless you and praise and honor you again thank you for so much for what you have allowed uh, on this scope the revelation that you've revealed to us that you brought to us concerning you and your word and your word becoming one with us father we bless you in advance for the manifestation of what you promised us thank you lord that you did not forget about what you said even when the enemy has worked in our minds and and just fought us and made us come to a place where we've given up and even become uh just threw away hope concerning the word you did not give up you did not quit on us you kept coming back because you're faithful to your word. You are faithful, God, and you are faithful to your word to perform it. And so you you brought it to us on how to get back to it. Thank you so much, Father. We could not have uh, uh, ever imagined how to get back to it without you. And we are so ever grateful to you for what you brought to us today on this scope. We bless and praise and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you guys, I love you. Thank you so much. I had asked for people to sow who could sow $20. So those who can do, I appreciate you. Those who have, thank you all so very much. I appreciate you um, for all that you're doing. It blesses me tremendously. And I pray that these scopes are helping you and blessing you uh, as much in the name of Jesus. And so you guys have a great rest of your uh, Sunday afternoon. If you, uh, when you go back to the replay, heart it up for me again, please. And thank you again in advance. I love you guys. Be blessed. Heart to help. It was so, so good uh, meeting with you. And uh, I just, I had an awesome time. Thank you so much. It was a blessing. So I appreciate you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. We'll talk again soon. And until then, do not forget to take that prophetic word and go to war.